Hey, my friends, we're back today. We're working dynamics problem. We're probably working one of the most quintessential dynamics problems ever. This, this particular dynamic, dynamics problem is probably in every dynamics book ever written, okay? It says, if block A weighs 12 pounds and block B weighs 8 pounds, so I've got these two blocks and there's a pulley connecting the two, find the tension, a, a frictionless pulley, find the tension in the cable, okay? Now what do they give me? They give me mu sub S and mu sub K. That's, that's for block A. It's the only thing that's touching anything there, right? So here's where our, our uh, friction is happening right there, okay? Now the question is, is this a static system or is this a dynamic system, okay? And the answer is, let's go find out, okay? So step one, let's see if it's, if it's static or dynamic. If it's static, we can check that real fast, okay? So here we go for static. If I look at block A, here's what I know, right? Block A has some forces pulling on it here. It's got a weight there and it's got a normal force and it's got a friction force. Okay, so for static, if this is eight pounds, right, this is 12 and this is eight, okay, that's given. So if that's true, then if this is T, which is eight pounds, then that's eight pounds, right? So T is eight pounds. And so for this not to be moving, this friction force, the maximum friction force has to be above eight. How do we check the maximum friction force, okay? Well, the maximum, since we know that friction is fun, right? For static, the friction is 0.3, okay? So if we take the weight of this, which is 12 pounds, right? That's what N is equal to. How did you get that so fast? Some of the force in the Y, up stuff has to equal the down stuff, right? So the friction force over here, the maximum that it could be for a static problem is 0.3 times 12, okay? Which is 3.6 pounds, okay? Well, this guy's eight pounds. The most friction possible is 3.6 pounds, so what does that mean? That means this, this thing's moving, isn't it? This system is moving. It is not a static system, okay? So we check that out. Now we're gonna approach this like a dynamics problem. So for dynamics, what are we going to use for our coefficient of friction? Of course, we're going to use kinetic. Kinetic means it's moving, right? It's motion. Kinetic means motion, okay? So mu sub k equals 0.25, all right? Let me erase this, and we'll do a dynamics problem. Okay, so the concept I want to introduce to you today is this, kinetic diagrams. How are we going to solve this? We're going to solve this with our, our number one dynamics equation, bar none, right? And that is our old friend, Mr. Newton, old Isaac, sum of the forces equals M times A, okay? Newton's second law, okay? Now I want you to think about this way. From this Newton's second law, we can have two free body diagrams. On this side of the equal sign, we can have, I'm going to call it a force body diagram, okay? And on this side of the, of the equation, I've got motion, right? I've got motion. I've got movement. I'm going to call this the kinetic diagram, okay? So I've got the force body diagram for this, the kinetic body diagram for that. And we're going to do a diagram for each one of these blocks, okay? Now we'll just really quickly define our axes here, okay? I've got an I hat direction and a J hat direction. That's just normal stuff. Okay, so for, for block A, what is block A? Free body diagram or force body diagram gonna look like? Well, here's block A. So the reason I call it force is because what forces are acting on it, not masses, forces, okay? So on this block, you have the weight of block A. You have the normal force for block A. You have this tension over here, and then of course you have a friction force, okay? What about on the other side of the equal sign? Okay, here's block A's kinetic diagram. So we're gonna have the force diagram, kinetic diagram. 
How is block A, and think about this side as the motion side, okay? How is it going to move? Block A is going to accelerate that way, isn't it? So it's going to have this. M A A A, right? Mass times acceleration, okay? Force body diagram, kinetic diagram. Let's do it for block B. Okay, so block B, same thing, has uh, weight of block B. I should put it like this, shouldn't I? Weight of block B, okay? Because up here on the top, I'm going to put, whoop, a tension, right? That's all the forces that are acting on block B, okay? What about motion for block B, okay? Kinetic diagram for block B. What's he got over here? Well, he's going to have this. M, B, uh, A, B. It's going to accelerate downwards, isn't it? Okay? Because now that I have that, I have to write F equals M, A. Well, it's so easy to write when you have, here's this side of the equation, whoop, here's that side of the equation. And every time you use Newton's second law on dynamics problems, do this. Do a force body diagram and a kinetic diagram. I'm going to do this over and over in the videos. You're going to see this um, more than once, okay? So let's start by looking at block A. And let's look at this. What is that? That is a vector equation, isn't it? It's got a vector on that side, vector on that side. So I can take one vector equation and break it into two scalar equation by breaking it into components, okay? So we're going to look at block A, but we're only going to start off with looking at it in the uh, x direction, okay? So in the x direction, I'm going to do F equals MA. So on the F side, what do I have in the x direction, okay? Well, in the x, I've got a positive T. I've got a minus in the negative direction. I've got this friction force, okay? So minus friction force is equal to, okay, that's all I have in the x. So on the other side of the diagram, I have M, uh, A, A, A. All right, so there is equation number one, okay? What about equation number two? Well, let's do the same thing, but let's do it in the y direction, okay? So on the f side, what do I have? I have uh, N, A minus W, A equals other side, how much in the y direction over there? None, zero, okay? Which means that NA is equal to the weight of block A, which is 12 pounds, okay? So there's one thing we know. Now we come right back on that and we say, okay, hey, can we find this friction force right here? Well, yeah, sure, because friction is fun, okay, which says the friction force is equal to mu, which is 0.25 times Na, which is 12, and a fourth of 12 is what? 3, right? So the friction force equals 3 pounds. So there's another thing that we found. Of course, we can use that right there, can't we? Okay, so let's go and do the exact same thing now for block B, right? Let's see, because i got a lot of unknowns up here. I'm going to need some more equations. So block B, what's going on, okay? How about if we sum the things up in the, um, in the X direction, in the X, what do we have? Uh, nothing, okay? Okay, fine. How about in the Y direction? What do I have? In the I, in the uh, J hat direction. Okay, so on the F side, I've got a positive T minus the weight of block B, which is, how much is that? Eight. And that's going to equal what? M, B, A, B. Okay? Oh, well, I got A, B, A, A. T, I got, I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that guy. I got too many unknowns, but I really don't. What do we know here? These two blocks are tied together with a rope. So if that one starts to accelerate five feet per second squared, five feet per second squared, 
that direction, what is V going to do? Also accelerate five feet per second squared, right? Because they're tied together. So the acceleration of block A is going to equal the acceleration of block B. Do you agree? Okay. So in that case, I could come in here and let's just get rid of the B and the A because A is A. Those two are equal to each other, aren't they? Okay, so let's simplify this equation right here. Um, the, ma the mass of block B. What is the mass of block B? So we know the weight of block B. We need the mass. Remember how to do this? The mass of block A, the mass of block B when you're talking about freedom units, right? We're talking about uh, U.S. customary units. So 12 pounds, you have to divide that by 32.2 feet per second squared. Get that into slugs, right? Oh my goodness. On. Uh, 12 divided by 32.2. So that's uh, 0.37. Um, so let's say 373. Slugs, okay, that's that's block A, and then block B's mass, what's block B? That's 8 pounds divided by 32.2, which is 8 divided by 32.2, 0 0.248, 0 0.248 slugs, okay? So, let's substitute that in here, so T, um, and let's, and let's, oh, one thing I messed up on. What did I mess up on? This MB, AB is moving in which direction? Downhill. So what does that mean? That's got to be a negative, doesn't it? It's going in the negative direction. So I'm going to get A all by himself. So T minus 8 divided by negative MB, which is negative 0.248 equals A, okay? And we can call that, that guy is equation number two, okay? Now let's take equation number two. Let's plug him in right there in equation number one. And that will only leave us one unknown, and that's T. Let's see if we can do it. Let's erase. Okay, here we go. A little substitution. Let's see what we can get for T. So T minus the friction force, which we found was three pounds, okay, is equal to the mass of A, which is 0.373 times, and now I'm going to substitute A, I'm going to substitute this in for A. So T minus 8, whoops, that's good, divided by negative 0.248, okay? And now let's solve this for T. So T minus 3 equals, um, let's see what that is, 0.373 divided by 0.248 equals 8. 8 equals 1.504 T, and then the then this is going to be a, a positive, isn't it? Plus 0.373 times 8 equals divided by 0.248 equals 12.03. Okay, let's move that to the other side. That becomes 2.504 T is equal to, at 3 over here, 15.03. So T is equal to 15.03 divided by 2.504 equals 6 pounds. And that is the tension in the rope, okay? So the key to solving this problem is obviously using Newton's second law, but the real key to Newton's second law is being able to just draw these kinet the kinetic diagram and the force body diagram because that's where all our equations are written off of. We take that, take that scalar equation, or that vector equation rather, and break it into two scalar equations. All right, I hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next video.